Hey everybody, Bill in Alaska, back again on day 50, the big 5-0 of my uh, crazy carnivore journey. Why, well, I, uh, I remember when I turned the big 5-0, I was kind of sad that day. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm officially old. But uh, I have a whole new perspective now. It's just, uh, now that I have my hope back and getting my life back, it's like, ah, I still have half my life in front of me. My own, my life's only half over. I got decades left. Um, but yeah, day 50 of on carnivore and a lot's happened. A lot has happened in the last week and not all good. As you, uh, may have seen in my, uh, in my headline, we got some, uh, some crazy flooding going on. That could be a real issue, but we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes. So day 50, oh, by the way, these are the same flowers from a week ago, believe it or not. They're hanging in there. A few of them got uh, pretty droopy. I had to take a couple out, but for the most part, a week later, they're really hanging in there. You know, I put uh, baking soda in the water instead of sugar. For years, I used to put sugar in the water, and then I read somewhere, or heard from someone, baking soda works better. So I, I used baking soda, and a week later, they're still hanging in there. It's pretty incredible. Anyway, day 50 on carnivore. Boy, what kind of crazy changes I, uh, my body and, and mind and spirit have went through in the last almost two months. In a week and a half, it'll be two months since I started this journey. Met Carrie, uh, my new dearest friend, and a bunch of other really incredible people. This incredible community. Um, just under two months ago, I was just in a black hole of depression and hopelessness. And now... Uh, now everything's completely reversed. I'm walking better. Um, I, I could feel that I lost a bunch of weight. And we'll get to, I had a lot of you uh, ask me about the nurse, uh, visiting nurse that I told everyone was coming out here. Uh, she did get in touch with me. So I'll be sharing that letter, uh, her letter that she sent to me with you guys so you can see what's up with that. You know, I had forgot uh, about a year ago, I completely forgot all about it. My, my long COVID brain, I call it, you know, my short, my memory is just like, ugh. Anyway, I forgot that I was getting, they were trying to get me a really uh, nice bariatric hospital bed through my uh, Medicaid. Um, one of those, you know, they're crazy expensive. They're like $10,000, $12,000. Uh, the bariatric, that's for the super big hospital beds for really big obese people. And they got the ball rolling on that just over a year ago. And I forgot all about it because it, it, it's been so long. Well, she finally got in touch with me because I reached out to to them. I called them. Oops, I accidentally hit stop record. Sorry about that. Um, I had contacted the hospital a couple of weeks ago and told them I requested another in-home visit. And I wanted to get some blood work done and things like that. So anyway, my nurse finally got in touch with me. Um, and, and she wrote a letter to me, let, letting me know what's up. So I'll share that letter with you, with you guys. Basically, uh, it's been super busy. She now she's now in the process of still getting that bed. And a year ago, I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I 100% need it. But now I don't know. I don't know if it'd be justified me getting a really expensive, you know, a bariatric bed. Right now, I could use it, but. By the time next spring rolls around, I don't think I'm going to need it. Next spring and summer, um, I don't think I'm going to need it. So I, I'm going to talk to her about it. But anyway, I'll show you guys that letter. Uh, yeah, and just the um, the changes and everything that my body's been going through this last uh, just under two months been incredible. Like I said, I'm walking better. My swelling in my ankles and my feet and my my edema that I've had for years and years is down to normal my feet look like a normal person's feet it's so crazy uh all my aches and pains well like 98 percent on almost all i still i still go still get a little twinge of pain here and there you know i'm still a big guy i gotta i'm at the very beginning of this journey still i got a long way to go but <clears throat> the improvements that i've had since starting carnivore have just been phenomenal one thing I did notice this last week, I felt, well, I've been under a lot of stress this last week with everything that's going on, but 
I've also felt almost like my weight loss had stalled a little bit. You know, up until that point, you know, every day I was feeling, I was looking down at my body and I could, I could see changes and areas of like the bulges on my legs, the fat bulges that used to be like a really big, tight water balloon, excuse me, uh, they are, they look deflated now. They're, they're not the big and tight, uh, like a big, about ready to pop water balloon. They look, they look like a water balloon that you took half the water out, uh, so yeah, just really visual changes, um, mental and spiritual changes. Oh, except <clears throat> like I was saying this last week, I started feeling like, hmm, it almost feels like my weight has stalled a little bit and I was just feeling just a little bit off and I was trying to trying to figure out where those feelings might be coming from. And I pointed, I kind of pinpointed it. I think I found out is that if you remember my last video, I showed you guys that big 10 pound bag of fat the fat trimmings that i'd gotten and i've been eating i think because i do i do tend to do things in excess no matter what i'm doing i just go you know full bore uh i think i've been eating too much fat i gotta tone down my ratio from fat to protein i'm doing almost 50 percent fat which i think is way too much for me um i, I just feel it and i need to tone it down so the last couple of days i've uh, i've omitted all the fat not the fat on my meat, the extra fat that I've been throwing in the uh, air fryer in my pan when I cook my meat. Um, I stopped putting that extra fat in. I'm just going to, here on out, for the next week or two, I'm just going to go back to the fat that's just on the meat um, and see if I get that feeling back like uh, like I had, you know, a week ago. But after watching a bunch of uh, the Dr. Berry videos and some other videos, um, yeah, you have to, you have to find that for your personal body. You have to find that balance between the protein and the fat content. And I've been eating too much fat since I bought that ten pound bag of trimmings. So I'm gonna omit that and just go back to the fat on the meat, and uh, I should get back on track. Um, I just want to do a couple shout outs real quick. I had forgot on the I was gonna do it in my last video. Some people, some very kind people, have been sending me some things off Amazon my Amazon wish list and a few other extra things. One of those uh, uh, sunlight simulator lamps. Yeah, this thing is so awesome. Uh, and some uh, essential oil, well not essential oils, uh, vitamin oils, you know, like vitamin D, um, the, the oil drops and uh, omega-3 oils, a uh, bunch of treats for Daisy, um, some of the Redmond salt seasoning. Oh, pork rinds. <laughs> Someone sent me uh, a whole case of pork rinds, which, and I, I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. But unfortunately, because I'm on lion diet, I, I can't eat them right now. But there's a whole bunch of bags. There's like eight or 12 bags. I have other smaller bags. So I've been giving them out to my brothers who, who really appreciate it. Um, but thank you so much. That was so kind for for everything that you guys have been sending me from Amazon. Just so kind and i uh, thank you so much for all this wonderful stuff and daisy thanks you for all the treats oh and send, someone sent them the um uh, a little baggie around the little hard balls or catnip balls he was batting that thing around and chasing it just just having the time of his life with that thing so thank you so much um uh, i'm so scatterbrained right now <laughs> i apologize uh i haven't been sleeping well just the last few nights compared to how I have been the last few weeks. That's another thing I forgot to mention is that, you know, my sleeping now compared to what it was, you know, three or not three weeks, uh, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, night and day, night and day difference. You know, almost two months ago, my sleeping was a nightmare, just a nightmare. I couldn't sleep more than an hour, hour and a half without waking up and having to shift position because I was in such terrible pain. And now I'm sleeping three, four, five hours at a stretch, no problem, which is, you know, it's unheard of for me. I have not slept that, I have not slept this well in, uh, I don't know, 10 years? I mean, a really long time, really long time. Um, except for the last couple of nights. Uh, I, I think it's to do with the, the stress, I think. You know, my mind's going a million miles an hour with everything that's going on with this flooding. 
but and we'll get to that in a minute but besides that 50 days in carnivore miraculous miraculous changes bunch of weight loss uh I, I visually I can see physically I can feel when I'm walking and just sitting or sitting at my desk uh which I haven't been able to sit at my desk for a couple of days I'm going to show you guys I got a little shot of that I took earlier I'll tell you why but um 50 days in carnivore and it's been an incredible ride with incredible change with incredible changes um and for those of you who are coming along on the ride with me and this makes me so happy you know, I keep reading in my comments on the videos of all the people who are taking this incredible journey with me um, and all the miracles that they're experiencing and all the changes that they're going through, uh, the weight loss, uh, the, all the ailments and illnesses, you know, disappearing. It's just amazing. And it helps me, you know, uh, to stay strong. And uh, it's just, it's just such a blessing just to to read the miracles that are happening in everyone else's life who who is also doing carnivore. It's just, we all have so much to be thankful for. To, to have found this this proper way of eating, putting in the fuel that our, our bodies were designed to burn. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I'm gonna show you that letter that my uh, visiting, in-home visiting nurse uh, sent me. So here's that. So here's that letter that my nurse sent me a few days ago. I don't think I ever told you guys, but my legal name is Paul. My uh, my middle name is William. So when I was a little kid, I was Billy, or B, as my nickname my family gives me. Um, but when I was a kid, I was Billy, and then as I grew older, I just obviously turned to Bill. I don't ever use Paul, just for legal purposes. So as you can see, she'll be out here soon. Unfortunately, and this is a real bummer, um, I was hoping she would be able to bring a scale. I had requested if she possibly could bring a scale from the hospital out here to weigh me. Because I remember, you know, it's been quite a few years, but when I was going in town into the hospital, physically going in, um, those scales I was stepping on, they looked like they could just easily be picked up and, you know, thrown in the back of a, a car. Um, but apparently, they're, uh, she says they can't bring one up. So that, that is a bummer, uh, but she is going to be able to do the blood work. So I'll, when she comes up, I'll have current blood work and I'll be able to compare that with my blood work from last time she took it, which was about a year ago. So that should be a pretty interesting comparison. I guarantee there's, there's going to have to be vast improvements on that. So I'll obviously uh, show you guys that uh, blood work comparison when it comes in. And then I'll talk to her about that bed. Like I said, I don't know if I, I can justify justifiably take a super expensive bed when I don't think I'm going to need it. Um, by the time, by the time winter's over and spring and summer roll around next year, uh, I think that bed may be best served for someone else who may actually need it. Like I said, I could use it now, but in six months, eight months, a year from now, I don't, I'm not going to need it. So I'm probably not going to end up getting it. Uh, I want to talk to her and see what she thinks, but I don't think I'm going to get it now. But anyway, so that's where I stand with my um, in-home visiting nurse for everyone who's been asking me about that. She is still coming. Can't get the big, uh, can't get my current weight, unfortunately, right now, but I'm still working on that. You know, I could buy a really expensive scale that goes up to my weight and, and to be accurate, but I think I mentioned them before, it's like veterinary scales. It goes up to a thousand pounds, uh, but they're expensive. They're like six hundred, seven hundred dollars. I just, I just can't justify spending that much right now on something that you know. I, again, just like the bed, a year from now, I won't need a scale that goes up that high. So I think I'm just going to keep plugging away on carnivore, and uh, hopefully, maybe midwinter or pushing towards spring, I'll be able to get on a regular scale that goes up to 500 pounds and it'll register because I'll be 500 or below by then. So that's exciting. Um, so anyway, uh, here's another uh, couple shots that I took while I was out of bed. So I will get that. Um, I'll just keep pestering and I'll get that chair back so I can start going back to my desk again. 
last couple of days, I was forced to cook from bed again, which I swore myself I wasn't going to do, but um, I'll get that chair back ASAP. Just everything that's what's going on with this flooding. Uh, let's dive into that. Oh, boy. So we got some pretty bad flooding going on. Um, this this entire area, like 20 miles north, 20 miles south, rivers are swollen, uh, properties are getting flooded out, homes are being flooded. A couple of days ago, I noticed I didn't have hot water um, in my shower, so I told my brother Aaron, and he went went to, <clears throat> went to go down in my basement, and he took the hatch off the floor, and there's a ladder down there, and he's just like, he froze, and he's like, whoa. And it turned out my basement was flooded, with uh, three feet of water, three feet, actually just over three feet. I, I got a video of it. He had to go down there. The water was all the way up to my uh, water pumps and hot water heater. And it actually went up over the bottom of the hot water heater and fried the element, the heating element. And so he had to go down there and raise everything. Him and Jerry went down there and blocked everything up on cinder blocks and uh, well, I'll show you a video of it, but it's just crazy. And now, uh, the lowest lot, the lowest lying home on our property is my brother Matthew, and his place is close to getting flooded out. You know, he's just stressing out, and <sighs> the water level, the our water table, um, is only like four or five feet from being to the surface of our ground. Uh, our groundwater is only about five feet deep right now. So it only has to come up five more feet and our entire property is going to be flooded. And what's scary is, is that our 10 day forecast is solid rain, 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 rain. It couldn't be a worst case scenario. Our driveway where you first pull in is completely flooded. I'll, I got some video of that. I'll show you guys. Uh, my brother's rented yesterday and the day, day before yesterday and yesterday, they rented a big dump truck and we have a, a, a backhoe, my father's backhoe he bought, you know, years ago. And they were trying to fill in and uh, put berms around my brother Matthew's home. We're trying to raise the driveway. Um, <laughs> just trying to fortify this place against what may turn out to be some catastrophic flooding. Like we may have to leave the property and our homes again, kind of flooding, which is just, <sighs> I never thought we might have to evacuate again after, you know, the fire when we had to evacuate four years ago and, and everything burned down. And now we could be getting flooded out, which is just, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. It's everything that's going on in the world, you know, the, the catastrophic flooding that's happening all over the planet, all over the planet. I just look, look what happened in Morocco or is happening in Morocco. Uh, it's through the entire planet, you know, people are experiencing, you know, the earthquakes and the volcanoes and the storms and catastrophic flooding, uh, all, you know, breaking records, like worse than recorded history, worse than recorded history all around the planet. And at that same exact time, now we're in danger of being flooded, which we've never had. In the 20 years that we've been at this property, we've never been in danger of being flooded out. So right when every all catastrophic stuff is going on around the world, you know, now we're in danger of being flooded out as well. It's just crazy. And like I said, it wouldn't be such a, a stressful, kind of terrifying thing, except our forecast is a solid rain for a long time. Um, they finally got in my basement pumped out yesterday. They pumped, you know, three, three and a half feet of water out of there. I got a little bit of footage of that. I'll show you guys. But, um, so they pumped it all out and about an hour and a half later, it was over an inch again. So, I mean, it's filling up like an inch an hour, which is really fast. It's really fast. So I don't know. All I can do is, uh, all we can do is fortify and prepare to leave. At least if we have to leave this time, we'll be able to take a lot of our stuff with us compared to, you know, the fire hit us so quick. We couldn't take really anything with us. Just what we could grab in a couple minutes. But... All we can do is pray and uh, prepare for the worst. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. That's always my motto. Um, and see how it plays out. 
but anyway here's some uh, here's some of that footage of my basement being flooded and getting pumped out and the uh our flooded area in in our driveway and my, and my brother matthew's home they're trying to put up a berm around that so here, here's some of that footage <laughs> So as you can see, we got a little bit of craziness going on. You know, these next couple of weeks are going to be uh, with this solid rain forecast that we got, or mostly it's like 95% rain is predicting. It keeps changing every day. So, you know, like I said, I've got to hope for the best, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. But with the rate that this, this water is rising, it's going to be interesting times coming up. Um, I do want to thank you guys ahead of time for for the the words of support and prayers I know I'll get after I post this video. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you my family thanks you. You cannot underestimate the power of sincere prayer. I mean, it really, really is a real tangible thing. You know, calling down help from above. So I sincerely thank you for for the well wishes and the prayers I know I'll get. So I'm going to keep you guys updated with what's going on with this flood. I'm going to wrap this up for now. Um, as always, please be kind to one another. Forgive each other. And uh, prepare, prepare, prepare. You know, what's going on in this world, I keep saying that too. But every day it just seems to escalate and escalate and escalate. You know... I, so much flooding well there's so many disasters going on going on around the world right now is what happened in morocco with that flooding it was just catastrophic flooding all around the planet and the earthquakes and the fires and you know there's always been catastrophic earthquakes and fires and floods throughout history but just in the last couple of years everything has escalated to it's normal now to see a worse than recorded history worse than recorded history over and over and over and there's a reason for that you know it's like revelations playing out right before our eyes and right when there's catastrophic flooding like never before seen all around the planet now we are we're in danger of being flooded out at this property when we've never had that in 20 years 20 years of living at this property almost 20 years and we've never been in danger of flooding before and uh right when all this other calamity is going on around the planet of the earthquakes and fires and floods now we're in danger of being flooded, so it's uh, it's all tied together. It's it's pretty pretty crazy. But anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Those of you who are on this journey with me, this carnivore journey, um, stay strong, stay strong. I'm so blessed and so happy that you share your journey with me, and your healing stories, uh, weight loss stories. They really inspire me, and it's just. We're just all so blessed to have found this community and this, this way of life. Um, so stay strong. Ask for help from above. Lean on each other for support. And uh, I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. And I will keep you updated with this flood. If an emergency comes up, you know, I'll put out another video far sooner than normal. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. Thank you so much. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing down there? You loving our new tub, huh? You loving our new tub? I'm gonna have to fill that up with stuff pretty soon. 
Just got a couple new storage tubs. Since I'm forever out of space for all my stuff. What do you think? <laughs> huh? You get your stamp of approval? Do you approve of our new tubs? <laughs>